So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now and I've talked about it a little bit on my social media in like shorter videos and stuff but I don't feel like I've really been able to convey the message that Spirit wants me to convey so I'm gonna do a longer video on here on my Patreon and hopefully that will, I don't know, hopefully this will get the energy out that I'm feeling called to share. Um, and this is about how every experience that we have with motherhood, like each child that we bring here, each pregnancy, each birth experience, each child themselves is different. I was first introduced to this notion. <laughs> um, this first came into my awareness in a very strong way, um, probably towards the end of my first pregnancy. Uh, my first daughter was stillborn and there wasn't a whole lot of time. I, I got her fatal diagnosis like 25 weeks in and she was stillborn at 31 weeks. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot of time for me to think very much about subsequent pregnancies or future children. I mean, I knew that I still wanted to have more children after her, but there wasn't a lot of time for like, oh my God, is this going to happen again? If I get pregnant again, is the next baby going to die? Like, what's that going to be like? It didn't really come up for me until I did get pregnant again. I got pregnant actually a year later to the day um, after my daughter was born. I got, I conceived like on her birthday. And of course, then it was kind of impossible to not worry about that pregnancy. Like... I was just so worried that that baby was also not going to make it. But the the advice that I got from other mamas that had gone through a rainbow pregnancy, that's what a rainbow baby, that's what they call a baby after a loss, um, is that that advice um, was that every pregnancy is different, every child is different, and that the experience that I had with my first daughter was exactly as it was intended to be. They didn't use these words, like the words soul contract, but this is what they were getting at. And this is what I've come to realize 10 years later now, almost 11, is that moving through carrying a child that I was never meant to raise, that's what we agreed to do before she came. And so there, there was never a timeline where she was gonna live. That was what her and I signed up to do together. And that soul contract was unique. It was between the two of us. I was going to have a different soul contract with the next child. And I just kept telling myself that. That this is a different pregnancy. This is a different baby. This is a different child. This is a different experience. And it really helped me get through that pregnancy. It was hard. It was a really emotional roller coaster as you can imagine but I went on to have a very healthy nine pound two ounce baby girl two days past my due date and there was a there was a lot of healing that came from that experience and I I've had four pregnancies since my first daughter was stillborn and I would be lying if I said that I finally got to the point where I don't worry it's never going to happen. I'm a mom. I'm always going to worry. But I do have a lot of peace. I have a lot of peace knowing that even if I do lose a pregnancy or, God forbid, one of my children ever dies, that that is as it was meant to be. Does it mean that I like it? Does it mean that it makes me happy? But I do find a lot of peace in knowing that those experiences were agreed to by both of us and that there's nothing that I did wrong. I'm not being punished for anything. It's not my karma. It's just a part of life. Sometimes part of the motherhood experience is burying our children. And if that is, um, something that I've signed up for with one of my children. 
then it is my honor to do that for them. I would strongly prefer not to, but the worry, the anxiety, and the guilt are just things that I don't carry anymore surrounding elements of, of our, our lives together that I, I know are part of our soul contract. And that theme of um, knowing that every pregnancy is different, every birth is different, every child is different, that came up for me in a very strong way after the birth of my fifth child. He's almost a year old. <clears throat> All of my other births had been vaginal. Um, one, my first daughter, I was induced and that was brutal. That was really, really, really hard. It's a very traumatic delivery. Um, they misplaced the epidural. They, they went too far. They punctured the fluid sac. And so I ended up with a spinal headache. I had to get two blood patches in order to fix it. I was completely incapacitated after she was born. The most excruciating pain I'd ever been in in my entire life. It was awful. I was at the... Um, the funeral home trying to plan like her service and her cremation and I like laid down and lay down because the pain was so bad it was horrible um but that post and that postpartum period obviously was so much immersed in my grief and my mourning it was really 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 hard and difficult but after I had my fifth baby he was not a vaginal birth um he was stuck. He was positioned improperly. And I had actually, I've talked about this a little bit on my social media, but I had seen the need to go to the hospital to birth him before it came up. And so I healed the timeline. I walked myself through going to the hospital and being in the hospital and giving birth there. And I saw it and I just had the feelings of peace and love while I was there. Peace and love. Because one of the things I felt like I didn't have when I gave birth to my first daughter was peace. I wasn't present. I was not present. I disassociated. And I did not have any peace while she was being born. And so with each subsequent birth, I found a lot of times, a lot of opportunities to practice this. I'm so blessed to have so many babies. With each subsequent birth, I had another opportunity to master another part of the birth process. And so by the time my son, my last son's birth rolled around, I knew that it was very important for me to be present and in my body and to be calm and peaceful. And so that's what I walked myself through. I walked myself through the energy of that before I went into labor. And so when I went into labor, the labor was very much off and on, which was not a thing in my other births. Um, and as I started to feel that there were things going on, I wasn't even, I had kind of planned on just free birthing. I wasn't going to call the midwife until after he was born because I have pretty quick labors and I'm a very confident birther. But I could tell um, in the morning after I had been in labor for an hour or two the night before and then I went to sleep and everything stopped, which was weird. When I laid down, um, it took the pressure, gravity, um, it took the pressure off of my cervix. He wasn't descending enough, and it's because his, he had an arm up. He couldn't position properly. You can have <laughs> you can have a baby head first. You can have a baby butt first. You can have a baby feet first. You cannot have a baby hands <laughs> first. It's just it just doesn't work. And um, eventually, I was I was transferred. The, the midwife came and. I was, things were just not progressing. So she finally did a vaginal check, which I'm uh, absolutely 100% opposed to. I never get them. I don't like them. I don't want them, don't need them. Um, but she suggested it and I trusted her and I kind of knew there was something going on. Um, and they were trying to figure out, they felt something. They, they had palpated. They had done their little manual check when they first got there, which she had been doing the whole time in my pregnancy. Um, I had had a couple of ultrasounds for a few other issues that were going on, all of which turned out to be just fine. Every single time he was checked, he was head down, beautifully, perfectly positioned just where he needed to be. And even when she'd gotten there an hour earlier, she felt around. She's like, yeah, I can, he's head down. But then when they did a manual check, they, I was nine centimeters, by the way, when they got there, they couldn't tell, they could feel something that, and, but they couldn't tell what it was. 
They didn't know if it was a foot. They didn't know if it was a hand. And as they were feeling around, they were in there for a while. Very uncomfortable. If you've ever had a check during labor, you know, I, that's why I hate them. I don't like them. They feel uncomfortable. My body does not want them. <laughs> but I knew something was going on, so I consented. And they could not figure out what it was. <clears throat> and finally, and she had said, you know, one of the risks was breaking my, my water because they could feel the sack. I mean, they were, I was dilated. I mean, their whole hand was like up in there trying to feel around. And they couldn't tell if it was a hand or an arm. They were pretty sure, eventually decided it was a hand. And there's not much you can do. You can't birth a baby that way. He has to be repositioned. And she was trying to, to gently push and like encourage him to go up to like move the hand down to reposition. The next step was going to be, I already knew, was going to be getting me on all fours and having me do some different maneuvers and like lifting my belly with like a, a wrap or sheet or something. Because that had happened with my last birth before this. That was a home birth and she ended up being just fine, but her hand was up like this. She was up like that for a long time, actually in pregnancy. But she flipped a lot. She moved a lot. She went head down <clears throat> to breach multiple times in a day. She moved in labor, in active labor. She moved, she flipped head down, breach, head down, breach. My midwife, who is extremely, extremely experienced. She is the go-to authority for breech birth in maybe the state of Washington for home births. <clears throat> Said she'd never seen such an active baby during birth. And that, but that was for my fourth baby. <clears throat> my fifth, my son, he was not active. <clears throat> and so they ended up accidentally breaking my water when they were trying to reposition him. And his heart was started to decelerate just a little bit um, when he was descending, when he was coming down just a bit during contractions and stuff. And so we ended up having to transfer all of this to say, um, we, I tried again at the hospital for a vaginal birth. The doctor I got was fucking incredible, beautiful, divine, masculine energy. My son had stabilized by the time we got there. Um, and he said that he was willing to manually try to reposition him again and try for a vaginal birth. And when he went to try to do that, he could, he could hardly feel him. He had ascended so much because his hands were still in the way. He wasn't positioned properly. And the trick to getting a woman's cervix to open that last little bit is pressure from the baby's head. You are never going to get enough pressure on your cervix with a hand. There is no pressure because a hand isn't pushing on the cervix. The head or a little hiney is going to push on the cervix to get that last centimeter and trigger the rest of the, the, the cascade of events for baby to come down the birth canal and it was never going to happen with his hand there. So I ended up, he was like, you know, it's just not going to work. So we went into the C-section and we got into the operating room and it took forever. Um, the, the doctor, I heard him grunting with the effort. He was literally like trying to get him out when he got the incision, when he was all ready to start like looking for my, like trying to get him out. My son put a hand up through the incision, literally poked a hand through the incision. He had to put his hand back in, try and rearrange him to pull him out. And then he put two hands through the incision. You can't pull a baby out that way. They're slippery. They're not, you, babies, humans don't come out one hand or two hands at a time. And in a C-section, they're probably not going to want to pull a baby out by their feet either. Vaginally, you know, that can happen, but he had, he had to get, he had to get a purchase, you know, on baby's body and he, he couldn't, he finally was able to feel around for his head. And he said he put his hands around his neck and pulled up to get him out because he couldn't get him out. After he opened me, I, it was probably 30 minutes of trying to get him out and he couldn't. And I was just bleeding on the table. I lost a lot of blood. It was very traumatic. Um, he was unresponsive when he was born. He wasn't on the monitors for probably 45 minutes. Um, he was unresponsive. They had to do rescue breaths when he was born. He ended up collapsing one of his lungs fully and the other one was partially collapsed. So he had to go to the NICU. I didn't even get to see him. They had to rush him off. It was, it was a lot. And that postpartum recovery. I'm 11 months postpartum today and I only now feel like I am at the same place physically that I was before I got pregnant. I couldn't walk properly for four months after I had him. I couldn't bend over. 
I was in bed a lot. Just a lot of discomfort and pain. And, and of course, the other mom things are like, my house is a mess. I don't have a partner. His dad was helpful for the for about a week postpartum and then that was it he left it just didn't work out for him to be here and he left I'm not gonna lie I felt very abandoned <laughs> I made it I managed but it was really hard and I actually had a very sweet friend who came it was just kind of coincidence it was very divinely orchestrated but she came in and she helped a lot um, about I was like a month postpartum at that point I think and um it was brutal, but I realized after that that postpartum periods are, postpartum phases, time frames, are also just as unique as each pregnancy and birth experience and baby. And I think the large, the overall point that I'm trying to make in all of this is that if we can just sit, if we can get present, if we can connect, Go inward, connect to ourselves, our higher self, our guides, our baby. Because I was connecting with Gabriel long before he was born. He was started coming to me way before I got pregnant. We can have an energetic foundation that leads us to a successful birth and postpartum period. Whatever successful is going to look like in this unique experience for this mama and this baby this time. It is so much easier for us to arrive there. If we are connected, if we are not disassociating, if we're not disconnecting from our physical experience, from our bodies as a defense mechanism because it's stressful and overwhelming, if we can stay in our bodies and grounded, it is a lot easier. It's a lot more likely that we are going to have a favorable outcome for our pregnancy and our childbirth and our postpartum experiences sitting in stillness, meditating, whatever you need to do, automatic writing, meditation, yoga, creating art, listening to music, whatever it is, however you feel called to connect. It is <clears throat> the, the connection. It is listening to your divine feminine, divine mother guidance, which is your birthright. Every human has access to that. Those are the things that are going to be the most likely to set you up for success. Whatever success is supposed to look like for this soul contract that you made with this baby in this pregnancy on this journey. Because all of your pregnancies, all of your births, all of your relationships with all of your children are going to be different. And that's okay. So the way... The way to know like how to move forward appropriately with your children with anything regarding your motherhood journey or anything in life really is to sit in stillness and set an intention to call that information in the understanding asking for the the basics of your soul contract with that particular child and then allowing that whatever it is that comes through did I want a hospital birth I love home birthing. I'm a huge advocate of that. But I also wasn't resistant, and that's what came through. I just figured my body and my baby know things that I don't understand consciously, and that's okay. If we have to end up in the hospital, then that's an important part of our journey. And I realized soon after getting there why we were there. It was really important for us to be in that hospital at that time. I can talk about that in another video, but... Trusting in your innate ability to birth each of your babies individually the best way for them and in a way that honors the contract that you made with them. Trusting that you know how to do that and trusting that it might look like something you don't want it to look like is so, so important. Every baby, every pregnancy, and every birth, every postpartum period is different, and that's okay. Just connecting into your intuition and your guidance is the best thing that you can do to set yourself up for effortlessly moving into your highest timeline. I was so unbothered when I was in the hospital 
everyone's like, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, he's gonna be fine. He's, I was like, yeah, I know. He's, I'm not worried, y'all are worried, I'm not. I was in my body and I was present. I was like, I am here, I can't worry, I can't, I felt myself once or twice wanting to leave my body and just la la la, think about things and check out. And I was like, don't do it, stay here. And I did that by asking myself, what do I see right now? What do I hear? What do I feel physically, like in my body? What do I smell? I hope this was helpful.